We come into the world of the tick and the terror. So I guess the first question people want to know is, like, how is this hair going to be? Because this whole tick is different, but there's costumes and they come into you. Like, are, are you going to be the, the fun, bombastic villain in this sense? You know, not the dark and broody one, but the, you know, well, how, how does the tear look in this one? Well, you're going to have to tune in to yeah. check that out. Okay. But, uh, you know, in, in this version, the terror kind of lives in the past. Yeah. So it's kind of like, a, a very, you know, there, there's a lot of flashbacks. that, And I think this one also has a really good season arc, you know, and, and character growth. And it's, it's Arthur's origin story. So, Arthur, you know, the tick say, is 140-year-old evil, you know, the epitome of all, of, of all evil and, and terror. And as he was reigning terror back 15 years ago before Superion got a hold of him, he did something horrible to Arthur's young little Arthur at 10 years old. And that experience completely changed and reshaped his life. Now, while that was going on, in the present day, you've got uh, Miss Lint, who is the villain. But way back when, the terror, we see flashbacks of the terror as her mentor. So the treatment and things that happen between them also guide who she is and what she's doing. So it's, those, it's that intercutting between the past and the present that, excuse me, that, that, it, that has a lot to do with the shape of what's going on in the present time. From uh, you know everything you've done uh, from childhood to now, you know uh, along the way to Watchmen to this, you know what does it feel like to bring a new product to, to, to fans who are who are looking forward to something like this? You know the Comic Cons of the world, when you know that they're going to go crazy for these kind of things. You know? Well, the, you know that's what, one of the things that's really exciting. It's like I knew nothing about the Tick, but when I started you know talking to my friends about it, I discovered there's a, a lot of fans of it, and uh, people loved it. You know they grew up on the cartoon. Uh, or they read the comic book parodies, you know, uh, way back when, when, when Ben created them. And, you know, and of course, Ben is still, he's been on every single iteration. And now, with such an incredible plethora of comic book movies that are out there, the timing was perfect uh, to do a uh, comic book movie parody. And Amazon was the perfect company to do it because... You know, to do a comic book parody, it's it's you want it to actually look like a comic book movie, or else it just it, the whole thing will look cheesy and silly. So I think you know we've got a nice big look, um, we've got a great season arc, we've got great characters. So it's not just silly joke after silly joke. It's a, it's got a storyline and characters that I think kind of keep you involved, but it's hilarious at the same time. So it's just you know you're it's it's holding you, it draws you in, but you're you know you're laughing every couple seconds. It's just funny. Uh, I know, I know. We were going to talk to you about Dark Tower and Elite and all that stuff, but I actually just want to ask: Are you going to be directing anytime soon again? I sure hope so. I've got no nothing I've been working on now, but I was real pleased with Criminal Activities. Um, it was a really fun project. It was a fun movie. Um, and I like the way it turned out. So, yeah, I really hope to do some more of that. That's one of my favorite things to do, actually.